Hi, I'm Lise Colucci, and I'm here to help you with everything related to toxic relationships and healing from them. So let's get started. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and we're going to talk about narcissists playing the victim and the pity play. So when a narcissist plays pathetic and plays for your pity and vies for attention by acting like the victim so that they can get away with something so that they can make you the bad guy and them scot-free walking around like everyone else is the problem, right? Or, or when they're using it to smear you. So basically why it works when a narcissist is, or a toxic person or really anyone is playing the victim, playing the victim, not because they are one, but because they know that it gets attention that then makes everyone else have empathy for them. It, it, it directs all that empathic energy toward them. It will make you feel safe and close, like they are revealing a truth, like they are being vulnerable. Like if they're doing it in a situation where like there's an argument, this is, this is what I have seen. So there'll be an argument start or a discussion start that then turns into them gaslighting you and deflecting and projecting and not wanting to talk about the topic you're trying to talk about and then start twisting words and then gaslight you so hard that maybe you go into reaction you get angry or you get flustered or you get confused and you're you're trying to come back to the point of what you were trying to talk about and they keep twisting and twisting and twisting and then you're angry or whatever happens there's something one of the two of you has gets upset and then suddenly boom they say see how you're treating me you see everybody treats me like this it must be me i must be the problem or everyone treats me like this everyone see it's not safe to talk to you it's not safe in this relationship they start playing the victim when they're the ones who were gaslighting in the first place and didn't want to just have a normal conversation about whatever the problem was in the first place so what that does is it makes you either feel sorry for them it makes you feel like they're being vulnerable. And so you soften your approach, you apologize, you fawn, you coddle them. Or it it sabotages your being the one who had anything against you. So it takes away all the stuff that they just did, all the gaslighting, the problem you were having in the first place with them, right? And it takes takes the spotlight off all of that, places a spotlight on this poor victim Who's being victimized and then nothing that you've said is validated nothing that you've felt or that you need to say is talked about if they do it skillfully and they do it at the right time it brings people closer to them including yourself it plays so hard onto your sympathies it also for a lot of codependent people and a lot of empathic people as well who just love helping others it can give you the sense that they need you it can give you the feeling that they have never had anyone they can trust. No one's been kind to them. No one's, you know, and they need you. And so it can give you the feeling that you're important to them and that you're doing something that is going to make a difference in this relationship and for that other person. They play the martyr to get people on their side. They play the victim to get other people to believe them so that no one believes you when they have been toxic towards you if they are using it to smear you they will play the victim to all your friends they will play the victim to anyone who will listen to groups of people and make it seem like woe is them and you're so awful right and that way they get everyone on their side and it's almost like you can picture them turning around and everyone else's backs to you and them turning around and looking at you over their shoulder like <laughs> I got away with it, right? See, they believe me and not you. Oh, yeah, it's a pathetic woe is me, you know, that they do. And so some of the things they might do is that woe is me sort of behavior, that, that um, victim stance. They might say things like, well, I do so much. I've heard, of a lot, I've heard of a lot of narcissistic mothers who, in particular, who will... Um, do a lot for people because they're controlling, right? So they need to make sure they're the ones doing all the doing for the family or for, for their, for people. And then complain that nobody, 
gives them the credit that they should get or, or basically they pull the supply out of people for the stuff they did but the thing is they're not just doing nice things they're doing nice things and using it to control so you know what that is if you have a narcissistic mother they will go out of their way to make sure they're you know taking care of all these things and then they are super cruel and critical and harsh and judgmental within that and then when you're not just like falling on your knees thanking them and the whole world isn't praising them constantly they pull this this you know act of being victimized in the situation they will guilt trip you a narcissist will use their own shame to project it onto you so whatever they feel should probably have shame for or whatever they feel shame inside themselves about they stuff it behind their ego and protect project it out sorry they stuff it behind their ego and they project it out to you making you the one who is you know appears toxic and them the victim a really covert narcissist will even appear vulnerable they will appear like it's almost like within this acting like they are sort of um, humbled and pit pitiful like pull, pulling pity out of you it's a ploy for pity they can seem like they're taking accountability if you really listen you don't even have to listen that hard if you really look at what they're saying and how they're doing it you can see that it is manipulation they'll even use this to lure you into intimate situations with them of all kinds so they will even use this approach to get some okay they will play like like for instance i met one that was um you know he it was hard for him having you know lost his marriage due to like you know her being crazy and all <laughs> right and her you know her her violent tendencies uh-huh and poor him well all he was after was the next the next supply and the next the next romantic relationship that would continually feed his need for being worshipped right so yeah they'll they'll use it to lure you in they will use it in the grooming process. They will use it to bait you to uh, believe that they're sensitive, that they have emotional sensitivity, that they're empathic because somebody like that, that, that you know, sees so much and so self-aware, right? No, uh, that's not what it is, <laughs> okay? Um, understand that when a narcissist is acting this way, when they are acting overly apologetic, which they can do if the covert narcissist is masterful at this pity ploy technique, when they are acting like the victim, it is manipulation. They are trying to turn the table and make you either forget what it was they did, uh, forgive them and move on. You know what I mean? They're trying to get you to just keep things status quo so that they don't have to take any accountability. They're trying to force the accountability onto you for something you didn't even do. It takes the focus off their bad behavior. It takes the focus off of their toxicity, even though this is another toxic manipulative tactic. Just a guilt trip, you guys. It can cause you sometimes the survivor of their toxic behavior to feel responsible for the narcissist's emotional world their emotional well-being sometimes they even use the silent treatment to do this they they'll go into a sullen withdrawn silence but it's one it's not the st the the stern silence it's the sullen withdrawn silence of somebody inside their shell because they're so afraid of coming out and being hurt what that does is the piece of you that knows exactly what that feels like to be victimized to be hurt to be um uh, bullied it triggers that part of you so not only are you empathizing with wow they feel really bad you're like i know what that feels like and you're sympathizing and once you sympathize and empathy comes into play and you start acting on it the manipulation is now won right by them uh, another tactic they might use is bringing up their past hurts 
and throwing that at you so that you stop what you're doing. Instead of saying, hey, I'm triggered because I've had these things happen and I need to calm down before we can have this conversation, which would be rational. They lash out and say, see, you're just like so-and-so. Oh, you're trying to do that. Just like, you know, I have a problem with blah, blah, blah. And yet you do this to me, right? So, and all you're actually doing is trying to either get information, have a conversation about something going on, talk to them about something you're seeing in the relationship that is or isn't working. It doesn't matter what it is. It's something where they don't want to take accountability for, or they don't want to have the discussion about, they don't want to go into it. They use this as, because here's the thing, in a, anyone can point out a past hurt. Hey, you know that I, you know, have abandonment issues. Why do you keep not texting and not showing up and not like, that's hurtful, right? That makes sense. But if, but to do that, to say that when someone says something to you, like, like, hey, it feels like you're talking to me in a really upset tone lately. Are you upset with me? And instead of saying, no, let's talk about that. I, I don't mean to be doing that. Or yeah, I am upset with you and having a conversation. You say, you know, I have a problem with being accused of things. That's where it gets toxic. You see what I'm saying? You're trying to get away with something. If you're just, if, if a healthy person or a survivor of this trying to heal is saying, hey, I have triggers that upsets me. And I recognize that that's my trigger. So let's have, let's slow this conversation down and like figure this out totally different, not using it to manipulate someone. So here's the thing with all of this pity ploy stuff that they do, and there's a lot more. And if you've experienced the narcissist using a pity ploy, let me know in the comments what you've experienced, because there's a lot of ways in which they can do this. So the thing is, it can make you feel certain things. It can manipulate you to feel certain things. It doesn't have to if you see what's going on, but it's sort of a natural thing that happens. Someone's sad, someone's this, you're gonna have natural reaction to it, right? So things that might you might just notice about yourself, you feel disappointed. Um, like, I'm sorry, you feel like you've disappointed them. You feel like you've upset them. You feel like you've done something wrong, but you can't quite figure out what it was you've done or you can't see how what you've done should have caused that reaction. You are taking responsibility like it's your fault for this situation or for that narcissist's poor pathetic state. You're doing things against your own ethical code for yourself. You're breaking your own boundaries with yourself in order to fix the situation once the narcissist has gone there. Your love is in question. You're, you're being questioned about how, how much you'll give to them, how willing you are to be there for them. You can't set boundaries out of fear of this happening again. You can't have conversations or talk about anything without the person going into straight up victim mode and, and uh, trying to pull pity out of you or anyone else around you. You're obliged feeling. You're, you, have, you have a feeling of obligation to cater to and please that toxic person. So basically it sets up the fawn response. Fight, flight, freeze, fawn. That's where we go when we are, uh, when our amygdala is firing off danger signs, right? That's the, the fight, flight response. It also has fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. The fawn response is the one that is you know, placating and catering to and pleasing and pleading and apologizing, groveling, you know, the quiet one batting its eyelashes, just please don't hate me. That, that, that fawning response is what it triggers this pity ploy. If you see it, it kind of triggers disgust, but if you don't know that it's manipulation and you are pulled into it and you are enmeshed or like deeply connected in a, a narcissistic relationship, that's what you might feel. Anyway, you may feel other things as well. Let me know what those are and hit me up in the comments. As always, happy to answer any questions or talk further on any topic. And if you have suggestions for anything, obviously talk there. If you need coaching, group coaching or peer support. There's information in the main comments of every video and I will be back. See you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.